of today. We're going to be doing a future skills prime knowledge series on ro robotic process automation. And we'll be joined by Siddharth. So Siddharth Singh is the founder and CEO of Quail Infotech. And uh, before starting the Quail Infotech, he was the executive vice president at NIT Technologies. He was also the head of core banking uh, in Wipro Technologies, and he has almost 25 years of experience. So once we, had, uh, we have Siddharth, we'll start the session at exactly 11. So how many of you in the participants know what RPA is, have had some exposure? If you could put that in the uh, chat, that'll be good. Uh, Anjana, you have to make a chat enabled for all. Yeah, I, I, I will just do that for everyone. We have around two minutes. We'll also wait for others to join in. I think uh, people are joining the session still. Yeah, so, so maybe you should just play the video once more and uh, enable the chat so that, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so the question to all of you as you see this video is, what do you know about RPA? What is your experience? And uh, what do you think? Um, you will get out of the session. Yeah. Hi, Siddharth. Hi, good morning. Good morning, guys. So, Siddharth, we have already introduced you. It will be uh, nice to hear, uh, you know, from you uh, about yourself. And uh, we will start at maybe we'll give two, three minutes for people to join and then we shall start. Sure, sure. So see, that's just a, a quick, uh, what I did was I asked the participants, what do they know about RPA? And if they've had some uh, exposure to it in, in some way, and uh, what do they expect out of it? So <laughs> that's what I asked. Let's say there are two, three answers now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm... Yeah, just, I'm just reading through, and uh, what people are saying is that they are aware of macros and... Oh, there's one person who says they're working as an RPA professional since last six years. <laughs> Very interesting responses. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Whenever you so uh, whenever tell me whenever we are ready to start, I can I can kick it off. Sure. So just just one thing I would like to tell to the audience: we have so, uh, so people joining still. I'm putting a link uh, of a survey which is about the feedback about the session and some details. If you would like to, you know, connect with Siddharth uh, and Quail Infotech in person, and then you can, you know, share it on the link uh, described. So I'm just putting it to everyone. Sure. Yeah, so this is going to help. Uh, let's say uh, you get some, I mean, some of you already know about it. Some of you know uh, basics about how, auto, how to automate routine tasks. I'm saying Excel-based automation and all. So we will be able to connect, I mean, help you better with where you are currently, right? This kind of a session, I'm also seeing a message. Will I be able to learn uh, RPA completely, follow, listen, right? And in, in one hour session, yeah, even RPA, I don't think we'll promise, right? So that RPA is easy, <laughs> but then one hour is not uh, enough to get knowledge. That is the reason why that survey is there. If you could uh, uh, use that and tell us more about yourself, what you're doing, what is your background, we'll be able to suggest you what you can, how you can start, where you can start from, right, Sid? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, see, learning a technology is never some, something that we can do in an hour, but we can at least give you direction how to go about it and tell you what you need to do to be able to become an expert in that field, you know, and become employable in that particular field. 
Anjana Arogyan. Thank you. Thank you, Smita. So yeah, we will start and Siddharth, first we would like to hear about you a little bit and then maybe you can start about the subject. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. This is, I think, uh, thank you everybody and good morning. I know uh, it's, it's tough to kind of uh, get out and take time out for sessions like this. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here and uh, let me start off by a quick quick introduction you know I, I mean i can go on for hours but i'll keep it very very short uh, mostly i'm uh, an it professional been in the industry for now almost 23 years you know and done various things i started off my career at the lowest of levels you know and that was the interesting part where i uh, worked with a company called g capital now most of you know it as genpack in the financial services sector uh, mostly decided to become a domain expert in that area and worked around the financial sector with a couple of more companies post the uh, decades, as we used to call it then. Uh, and then uh, 2006, I kind of did a slight shift from a banking domain into a technology from banking, what we call as a techno functional role, and uh, moved into Wipro and was uh, working in the banking and financial services sector there. A uh, couple of years, very uh, worked with Wipro for about eight years, did multiple roles, and with some of them very interesting, where we drove non-India growth for Wipro. Uh, Rishad and I worked very closely at that point of time, uh, building how to do a, a real product-based strategy for Wipro. Post that, I joined the NIT Technologies as an executive vice president, was leading about four or five different businesses for them. Uh, this was another exciting period of my career was built in and that's the time i think i really got introduced into rpa and automation back in 2013-14 and uh, those times uh, nobody knew rpa and somehow i'm getting that deja vu feeling because i was running these similar sessions uh, in dallas new york australia and sydney talking with cfos about what rpa is and it's exciting to not do this in india as well it was still gaining popularity 2017, uh, what I would say at a young age of 40, the entrepreneur bug hit me and I decided to leave NIT Technologies and start off with Infotech. Uh, the concept was very, very simple. I wanted to do work on new technologies, build digital growth, you know, and, uh, and create a scenario where uh, we did something exciting uh, with technology and functional areas. And that's where Quail as a concept was born. Uh, initially, we were focused into doing services around various technologies like RPA, SFTC, IoT. And then uh, in 2019, early, we launched our own intelligent automation product, which is called IOZO. And last two, three years, the journey has been even more exciting by taking that product IOZO into market. So in a nutshell, this is my background. Uh, studied a lot. I still study, so I love to see you guys here you know, and see you guys interested in learning new technologies. Uh, I've done uh, my uh, normal graduation, MBA from NARC Monji, then MPhil from Christ University, then a technology leadership program from MIT uh, in the US. So continue to study and love to get an opportunity whenever I can kind of learn something new. So that's in a nutshell about me. Are we good to go with the presentation or do I want to cover something? So that is nice. We were also waiting for people to join in. So we kind of have uh, uh, people, you know, who, who would join in a little sure. bit here and there. So I think we yeah. can proceed. Just one, is my video clear? Because I'm getting a feeling it's, it's bloody a little bit. It's okay? It's a little bloody, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Can, let me try and do something. Just see what. Yeah. Like. People are also messaging it's a little blur. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can get yeah, that clear. That. Yeah. Just give me one minute, guys. Uh, we are a technology company, so we always face technology challenges. So <laughs> we're all set for it. Give me a second. Little better or still blurry? I think that's because there are some light in front of your glasses are reflecting that light. I uh, okay. Just one. People are saying it's fine. So. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. I think removing the light will be a bad idea. I can remove my glasses. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is fine. This, this is, fine. is fine. People are oh, like, fine. it's okay. fine. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Brilliant. Okay. Let me quickly share the screen. Okay. Anjana, you want to uh, cover the future skills prime section and quickly talk, or you've already done that? So, uh, we, we don't have, have to, right? Yeah, we will okay. do it towards uh, the end, and we also we will take questions according to however you feel it's convenient. So. Sure, sure. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, folks, so uh, this is one hour of uh, what I call is crash course on RPA, and hopefully we'll not crash, but have fun, fun doing it. Uh, if it gets boring, uh, please uh, raise out your hands and ask questions and uh, interrupt me if you feel like it. But let's try and get through the presentations as, as we get along. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so we had a video from Future Skills. Uh, just skip that. So we start off with the first question: What is robotic process automation? You know, and even to people who are experts in this area, you know, this is something you love to hear about. And we'll go with something called as the definition of RPA. The definition as described by International Robotics Association is called, says that RPA collaborates with existing IT landscapes and bridges the manual interfaces between them. That's the textbook definition. Uh, but I didn't get anything out of it, right? So it was something, well, I, this reminds me of that three digits movie scene, right? This is what's completely written with no clarity what it is. So let's go very simply and, and understand this a little bit more in depth, right? So what are the things that RPA talks about is that it's a software that works on the user interface level by replicating actions a human user would take. Very simple, key points, user interface. Now, hopefully a lot of you understand what user interface or UI is. UI of a software is the part that you get to see on your screen. You know? how you work with, everybody knows that computers work on bits and bytes, zeros and ones, right? So UI is something that you see on the screen that helps communicate with the central processing server of the system, laptop, computer, whatever it is. Now, RPA works on UI. That's way different than what traditional automation or technologies work on. Because traditional work automation and technology used to work with integrating with the database or the backend of any software app. So this is the primary key factor why RPA came into picture. And then second is it mimics human action. Very, very important. Right? So what RPA does as a software, it copies you. Whatever you do as a human on the system is what RPA can do in uh, as a form of a software on the same system. That's the key differentiator. Right? Now let's quickly cover it in detail. It's configurations that automate manual and repeatable tasks. Now, why do we say manual and repeatable tasks, right? Because one of the key factors is that humans can take far more decisions than what our software can do at this point of time. So what we focus on automating is something which is manual and repeatable. Then these are algorithms which are solving very specific problems. Uh, I know a lot of times when we talk about the robots and automation, we immediately correlate with the Terminator 2 movies and think about Arnold Schwarzenegger walking in and shooting everybody out. But that's not really what the uh, reality as of today is. Maybe in the future, yes, of course, we may get somewhere where AI and algorithms can actually completely start doing thing and anything and everything. But today, that's not the case. Today, it's more about algorithms working towards solving very specific problems. Uh, now, I already talked about the user interface. This is software that works and exclusively accesses the user interface of an application. We call this very important because an important feature called being non-intrusive comes into play. Because of this, this is not intrusive. It does not need a your security systems to be cleared because it's working like a normal human. So rather than your IT security team clearing your RPA software, what happens is your login accesses are controlled for these bots because they're working on user interface. And remember, when you work on user interface, you deal with one transaction at a time. So when you deal with one transaction at a time, you make one mistake at a time. 
or you do one right thing at a time either way right? lastly that's what we talk about is it's workflow enabled what we say is a lot of time our organizations are facing challenges as there's no workflow to actually automate the, uh, the way we do work you know it's normally what happens is that when somebody finishes their task they hand it over to us or some email is sent to us with the help of rpa you can enable a workflow and in, it can automatically do something where one task is finished, the next one gets started on its own, or the human gets into action uh, post that. Hopefully, this made it a little bit more clear on what RPA is. What is important to also understand what RPA is not. Like I said, it's not a humanoid robot. And I'll actually tell you a story uh, just to kind of, for you to correlate with uh, this. When, we, when I first doing RPA, back in 2013-14 uh, i had a very very and i said we are building bots and i had a very senior uh, leader uh, from uh, one of uh, the large uh, companies in india who came who said that i'll come to your office to see uh, the bots in action and uh, when this person comes to office he he turns around to me and says oh where is the bot where is the robot and i was like little confused what to respond <laughs> because uh, I was in a situation that uh, there is no bot and it took me 10 minutes to make him explain that there is no robot sitting at some desk and doing some actions while the robot is actually a software and it sits inside the computer and inside the laptop and does actions there. So very important to differentiate that RPA is not a humanoid robot. Second thing, a lot of times people ask me if we start doing RPA, then my job will go. It will completely replace me. Trust me, that's not going to happen. RPA or any kind of automation today cannot replace humans entirely because certain intrinsic knowledge that we carry from the way we have grown up, teaching that to a bot is practically difficult and impossible. And I can give a very simple example. I mean, if you guys can correlate to it. If you look at, uh, let's say, somebody who's working as a server in McDonald's, you know, and if, let's say, you were approving a loan for this person, and the person comes to you and says that my salary per month is five lakhs, five lakh rupees, and I am working as a server in McDonald's. Now, if the and he gives uh, salary slips for five lakhs, which are authentic, he gives uh, all his documentation and tax documentations and everything which is authentic. What will a bot do? Bot will evaluate that and say that, okay, this is right, this is good, approve the loan. But in reality, the knowledge that we have carried from our childhood tells us that somebody in McDonald's earning five lakhs as in, in the server position, probably a McDonald's uh, franchisee owner may, but as a server position, five lakhs is not a real number. Now, this is knowledge which has not been taught to you, but comes intrinsic as time passes, right? So that's where, the human factor comes into play. Replacing humans uh, is something that cannot be done as of today. Even simple things, right? So many times our system hangs. What do we do? We just hard boot it and restart it, right? That's what's been taught to. Nobody has taught that to us, but we know that's the way to solve problems. Just hard boot and reboot it. A bot will not do that. It will not be able to solve problems which has not been taught to it. So rest assured, it's not going to replace humans completely, at least today. 10 years down the line, I don't know, but yeah, not today. Uh, something that replicates human cognitive functions. Now, this is something which was not there six or seven years back, but it has changed considerably as of today. Right? So, for example, when we say cognitive functions is what? It's basically seeing, listening. You know, these are capabilities we are able to now teach bots. We are able to tell them any kind of digital information. You can go ahead and use a bot or a document extraction tool to learn it from the system. This is something now we have taught. So these cognitive functions are something we've been able to teach bots and it can be done. So a lot of times when we do automation, people are thinking that, oh, this is too complex. How will the bot read it? No, bot can also read, bot can also listen. Now bots can also talk, bots can also chat and interact to a extent of what we have taught, taught them. So then, yes. This is something limited though to factors which is on digital data. But what about smell? What about things which are uh, the decision-making part of it, where 
somebody has to sit and decide whether uh, let's say for a, what 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 a judge does and evaluate what is happening in real life now that is something a bot cannot do while it's digital data which can be read and simply taught that can be done by bots but the moment a judgmental aspect comes into play that cannot be done by uh, bots as of today so rpa cannot replace judgment activities a lot of times we get automation requests where judgment is involved where a customer com- comes and says that can you look at this balance sheet and understand whether this can be done or not we come back and say that yes we can take out the data we can program the algorithm but when the judgment needs to be done a human will need to sit down and say that yes this makes sense and approve it or do something that's what bots cannot do as of now okay last and very very important a lot of times automation is thought to be a cost play right people think that if i automate that is just to reduce cost trust me that's not the way to approach automation at all automation is something way beyond a cost play i have seen companies implement automation purely to improve customer experience even though it cost more i have seen customers do automation purely to improve efficiency and life of their employees now i'll give you a very good example in this right if you look at uh, the finance function most of the time you will hear from them end of the month hai mai busy hu i hope uh, people understand hindi uh, and i'll try my best to replicate it in english but the reality is that uh, when the finance function is end of the month you go and ask them for anything they'll say no no this is end of the month we don't have time we are working 12 hours a day now why is that because a lot of the finance activities are dependent on cut off dates but trust me they are not trying to ward you off however much we hate finance guys for controlling our costs but the fact is that they are actually stressed end of the month last 3 4 days is when they end up processing all the invoices we are clearing bills submitting the final month end report now that's a very very stressful time for these guys uh this is the time when automation plays a key role automations can work 24 by 7 and they they can actually do all these manual transactions and get them out of the way of finance guys so if you look at cost play you will say that i'm just using automation for four days in a month why do i have to pay for the entire month but the reality is that those four days are actually saving stress on your employees and accuracy we have seen cases where manual error creeps in due to these stressful activities and automation can help remove those manual errors and make life much more smoother so just when you are thinking about rpa just remember it is not purely a cost play hope it made some sense this is what rpa is not okay what does the world is saying about rpa sir i thought i'll include this slide right just because just to get you a flavor of how rpa as a market has been growing a lot of people talk about different things rpa is robotic process automation intelligent automation whatever you talk about it right now it has grown exponentially in a crazy fashion and in the next 7 years what analysts are predicting this is the latest report which is which came out this month is that rpa today is a market size of about 10 billion dollars and in the next 7 years is going to be 43.5 billion dollars okay that's numbers very very interesting now what does gartner talk about right gartner says that 72% of the organizations will start adopting rpa in some form or the other within a year's time and in 5 years 100% of companies will adopt rpa in some form or the other now these are huge huge numbers right i mean from a 10 billion to 43 billion market globally means there's so much work that's going to happen in automation now the moment we talk about numbers like this and growth numbers like this the thought that comes into play is for i don't know what this how does it matter to me mujhe kya hai Does billion or forty four billion or hundred billion? What difference will it make to me? Yes, it will make a lot of difference to your life, right? Considerable amount of difference to your life, because uh, uh, what I was told that a lot of people from manufacturing and automotive industry is uh, 
is in this particular session. Uh, do you realize that it's this has started coming and impacting and impacting your industry as well? Globally, companies like Toyota, BMW, Pfizer, name the type of manufacturing or automotive unit and the DHL or delivery logistics unit have already started deploying RPA at a large, large scale. So I decided I'll include some use cases for you to relate to. And I mean, just for the sake of uh, creating a relationship in your life, we talked about what RPA is, what it does. Look at in the automotive se sector from application process or vehicle sales, vehicle financing, uh, services and diagnostic reports, tracking inventory levels, digitizing documents, shipment receivable process, payment reconciliations, payment processing, supplier onboarding automation. These are just very simple examples of automation. Uh, what we are seeing in terms of the level of automation that can be done to all the digital work that's being done in an organization is unbelievable. If you look at the HR side, onboarding of workers, KYC, and included that in the manufacturing segment, bank reconciliations, material order requests. We've done so many automations on uh, material code creation, uh, pricing of products, export partial invoice generation, shipment billing uh, calculations, KYC of employees, vendors, uh, onboarding of workers, MIS reporting, and finance side, EOs, invoice processes, and whatnot. Operations efficiency, quality checking, you know, reporting around quality has been now being automated for a lot of manufacturing and automotive industry. So you cannot just sit back and say, Mujhe kya, what's happening around the world, because this is going to impact India as much and Indian companies as much as it's going to do globally. You know, you have to catch up to those standards. And I, like I said, seven years back, I was doing these sessions uh, across the globe. And now I see these sessions more and more happening in India, where Indian companies, even mid-level, are reaching out to us for automation and automating these kind of functions. OK, so this is the story about use cases and what it impacts you and how it impacts your life. Okay. Now let's, uh, I'll, I'll quickly take a look at the chat and see if there are any questions which I can uh, so there now. are there are questions that I can uh, I can uh, you know there are some people who have raised hand also maybe we can take them later I'll read out the questions uh, by UI do you uh, you mean any kind of user interface or it's only via GUI any kind of user interface it okay. also works on uh, mainframe applications Citrix applications it also one works on uh, any remote uh, login tools or anything like that. So it's not only just UI, uh, it's not just UI, but any kind of user interface. Okay, so the second question is, conditions can be included in the bot to decide to certain level? It, I mean, it's like a question. Uh, you can include any number of conditions, any number of logic. There are processes where we have done uh, more than 300, 400 different kinds of conditions and different kinds of logic. Uh, there is no restriction to that. Like I said, what is important is clarity of it being rule-based. The moment you leave it ambiguous and you leave it judgment-based, that's what you cannot do. If you are clear that this is what needs to be done, you can include as many conditions as you want. So we have another two questions. Uh, how RPA would be impacting the aerospace and aviation industry and business? So, uh, by the way, aerospace industry, NASA is implementing automation at a very, very high level. Right? The amount of automation that NASA has done close to about, if I'm not wrong, 500 odd bots. We haven't done them. One of our competitors has done that. Uh, but we were involved in delivery for that particular project. They did not use IOZO as a tool. Uh, they used some other tool. But NASA has got, done automation across the board from uh, inventory management to finance, to tracking progress of R&D, to tracking deliverables, to tracking goods. So, and NASA is on a spree where in the next three years, what they're looking at anywhere between 40 to 60% of the work that they do is going to get automated. 
Now, similarly, in uh, Kazakhstan, we are running a project for one of the aerospace companies, which is building a space station in Kazakhstan as of now. And the owner is also a good friend. He's an MIT batchmate of mine. Uh, there's so much work that we are looking at automating, particularly around uh, supply of goods, tracking of suppliers, re raising POs. So they're starting off uh, in this direction as of now, where they're particularly focused on the kind of goods that they're collecting and things like that. But the intention is to automate more and more in terms of trajectory, in terms of See, one of the big advantages of RP is that it can do number crunching to an extensive level right? and without fail. So in aerospace industry, what we see is that uh, numbers play a big, big role. Right? And it, a lot of times what is happening, even they're using specialized applications for doing it, but these are all specific to one area, right? And they don't, the applications don't talk to each other. Integrating them becomes a challenge for them. That's where RPA comes into play, where if data needs to be collected from three or four different sources and then consolidated into a single number crunching kind of an activity, that's uh, what where automation plays a key role. I hope uh, that helps answer your question. I've got 11 more so, messages. <laughs> sure. So, uh, how is RPA useful for automotive shop flow? Kindly share the use cases. So, very, very, very. Uh, uh, Tough question. I will suggest that there are more than 200, 300 uh, use cases around the shop floor. A lot of times what is happening, we see people use this for uh, roastering, uh, availability of resources, uh, what is the output that's going to come out. You know, BMW is doing that. I think Jaguar uh, was planning to do something similar in the in UK. Uh, in terms of, uh, see, don't, don't think that RPA will automate your machines. No, it cannot. But what it can check for you is the health of your machines, the lifetime service of your machines. It can monitor any logs that's coming out. Uh, so for example, one of the large uh, telecommunication companies, what they're doing is using RPA to monitor their network for alerts for any failures. So if your machines, uh, the machine diagnostic report needs to be evaluated and find out what is going to fail, what is not going to fail, that is something being done out of RPA. Now, these are cases that I know. If there are more cases from you, we can always discuss and try and come up whether this makes sense for you or not. But anywhere you see there is data being handled, which needs to be clarified, data in the form of anything, whether it's in the form of numbers, whether it's in the form of monitoring videos. Yes, video monitoring is also being done, you know, we're tracking of who entered. So a lot of time you put up cameras, which is just looking at, uh, the shop floor and a human is observing and monitoring that. The security agencies, which is now using AI and RPA combination to track users and ensure that people are only approaching specific areas, not everywhere else. So there's a lot of uh, uh, applications in that. These are something that I remember uh, as of now, but uh, more than happy to have a discussion separately also. And look and, and, and why limit yourself to what has already been done? If you come up with something, we'll be more than glad to innovate and work out a solution which can work out and create an example, not only in India, but across the world. Okay, so I too think many people, questions. Yeah, too people many are questions. just, people so are just <laughs> I'll just, uh, so, so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm yeah, trying to make it, yeah. We have time, it's 11.30, so I've paced it in such a manner that we answer these questions. So if okay. anything that is related to RP and applications, let's do those questions right now. And then I'll okay, get so, into so just one, one thing, uh, so the participants also. So there are some specific questions on in this domain, how is it used or aero engine aftermarket services, stock market. So I think SIT is trying to say uh, uh, some constructs in which where it could be used, right? So yeah. you will have to apply that into your domain because I don't think you'll be able to take up everything. Now, if you need yeah. more conversations, please fill in that uh, Google form. But there are some questions which are generic and it should help everybody. One is uh, uh, skilled resources, availability of skilled resources. I think there is somebody who's trying to uh, uh, implement RPA. And one more question is, how is it different from, I think it is there in the question and answer, how is it uh, different from automating a process through backend logic change? So I think these kind of, uh, yeah, might give more clarity. Absolutely. Okay. So let me handle the first one, skilled resources. Uh, that's covered in the presentation that we get along. And trust me, skilled resources is always a challenge across the globe. Right? 
that is the challenge we are facing in anything with when we when we come and work on new technologies right india is a country of uh, what 1.4 billion people as of now and even then finding skill resources becomes uh, a, a challenge for us right it's always something we are we are looking and struggling for we have done something around that we are trying to do something around that and i'll cover that later in the presentation so hang on we we'll cover that piece if you still feel that it didn't get answered we'll talk about it again later on right so that that's one portion covered now the second portion is how do you tackle back end logic and how do you uh, is different from automation it is something which is grown above uh, just back end logic automation right so what happens is that when we do back end logic automation there are certain factors which is a challenge one is its time consuming second is uh, it's very intrusive in nature you are integrating with backend now the more the more and more organizations or software is moving towards the cloud you don't have that many backend integrations available right so what's happening is that a lot of this i mean there are apis and open apis and api integration is happening and uh, by the way rpa also does api integration it's not that it does not do what advantage you get is that you get a workflow based integration a lot of times your api integration does not help you provide a workflow you can tap into an api and connect to sap but is that's that will only give you a data connection it will not create a process for you for that process you'll have to probably go implement a vpn or do something separately altogether so what rpa gives you as an advantage is that it not only one avoids that intrusive nature you know particularly tackle closed applications for you even in open applications the advantage it does is that you can do ui based connect you can do api based connect and you can actually create a workflow to make it easier easier for your user third thing even back end automation may not completely automate that task for you right in this case i'll tell you why because a lot of times auto uh, any task requires a hand off with a human or some amount of human connect right that doesn't help in the back end automation when it's something which is completely independent i also recommend to a back end integration and a back end automation for it but a lot of work that we do which is close to 70 to 80% of the work that is done in an organization is a hand off between system and humans system and humans right now that's where automation comes into play and that is it's able to handle much more easily i hope i answered this question but it's worth a debate we can catch up post the session also and discuss this at length but yes trust me uh, when seven years back when i used to sell this a lot of people used to come back and say that i don't want to change but the world is changing right now and they are implementing it so there is logic behind it it's we can stay in our shell and say that we'll only do back end automation but at the end of the day the amount that you can do in our with rpa is far far more than back end automation itself next one any other question or should we there are like consistent <laughs> question on what is the difference between uh, rpa and ai or how are they integrated or used i mean two three questions on that line okay now this is uh, something very easy to handle right uh, what what happens is that what is ai now ai mostly when we talk about ai and what everybody relates to ai is is can be divided into two components you no know, one is where uh, we use it for uh, replacing the cognitive and sensory functions which is one our, our visuals our uh, speech you know and our hearing abilities right so that's one piece that's where we call ai is trying to replace and obviously yeah, the the judgment part then there is machine learning aspect of it right which is basically how a machine learns on its own right <clears throat> so ai and rpa are basically very very complementary in nature and i'll cover this in in one of the slides later on but what's complementary in nature is that what we are trying to do with rpa right now is task automation but what we are heading towards is what we call as intelligent automation right? which is which is what we do in ibozo as a tool so what we do is we are building activities which can do ai and ml functions and help rpa achieve its task for example i can take uh, one of the very basic examples is when you are reading an unstructured document or an unstructured email 
RPA on its own cannot use that unstructured email because there is no rules in that email. But AI can, right? What AI can do is that look at that unstructured email written by a human and understand the key aspects of it, feed it to RPA, which goes ahead and does an implementation or bot, which does, does an implementation. So they are very complementary in nature to each other. Uh, what really happens is that AI generates a lot of data, which RPA can go and use and apply rules and derive something out of it and go ahead and implement something. So that's how they are used in convention as of now. Uh, we have a lot of our RPA folks who start learning Python and start learning implementing AI algorithms in the course. And we also do it a lot. Uh, if, if you look at Iwozo, which is our tool's name, you can see it on the top right. So look at what it's form, short form of. It is an AI work zone. So what we say that it's something where AI and RPA comes and amalgamates together. Hope it made some sense. And maybe one more question. And uh, no, we can take a couple of more and then we can get into the presentation. Because there are so many questions, I kind <laughs> of uh, stopped making, I think, note of some of them. So, uh, but there is one question, which is, I think a lot of people, like you said, uh, will it replace design engineers, RPA? Uh, so, like, I think I started this conversation, right? I mean, it's not going to replace anyone. Right? There is no replacement, but it will definitely make you far more efficient and efficient and productive. What we have seen, we, we used to have this question when we started implementing RPA in the customer service help desk for a large insurance company. So there was a lot of retaliation where people felt that, uh, and I've handled unions as well, you know, I've interacted with unions. A lot of retaliation where if this comes, then jobs will go, people will lose jobs, right? But what I say is that, see, the fact of life is that this will help you achieve much, much more than what you were doing. Right? So something, if you were able to process 20 transactions an hour with RPA assisting you, you will be able to process more than 100 transactions an hour. Now that makes you more and more efficient, right? That's one thing. Second thing is that a lot of time your day, if you evaluate your day, you know, and we have actually done these evaluations, you will be surprised that out of eight hours working, we end up doing four to five hours of non-productive activity. And I'll give you examples of that. Responding to emails, which are very generic in nature. A lot of times preparing reports. So much time is wasted in putting uh, time sheets together. You know? So many times sending updates to your bosses, you know, taking collation of data from here and there. Right? Now all that, can, you can automate and slowly it will become even easier to automate all these functions out. I'll give you a very basic example of aut automation like this. You know, when we used to set up Microsoft Outlook, I remember, I mean, I'm an old man, but I, I don't look that old, but I'm old. But <laughs> the fact of life is that we used to call the admin, IT admin fellow and tell him, yeah, please set up Outlook for me. And then he'll put in some secret password and he'll put in some something, something, and he'll do something for 15 minutes. Then he'll go away, have a coffee and come, and you'll be looking for him. Come and do this for me. Now, you can set up your Outlook email account in a matter of a minute. And what has happened? Automation has happened. The activity and process is the same. What has happened is that it has been in, included in inside Outlook and Outlook go, go, goes and does this entire thing on its own. This is what the story is. Yeah, so, Sid, I, I think probably just one more thing. Move on. Yeah, yeah you, you should move on. And uh, <laughs> just <laughs> from somebody who's a big fan of RPA and someone who has uh, done uh, automation using using teams, right? I have done yeah. RPA. I have had teams who do automation. So one <laughs> thing, one major difference as I see as a user, Sid, is uh, you can do some of these things using complicated macro, VBA. I see a lot of technology names asking how is it complementing. RPA is simplified and any business user should be able to at least create few bots. That is the, that's a, that's a totally different thing, right? So Absolutely. some of the uh, leads or managers who are there and as participants, you yourself will be able to do it. You don't have to depend on someone yeah. to come and do it for you. Probably that's yeah. where it is. Keep that in mind as you listen to this. It's not yeah. for somebody else. It's for each one of us in this call. 
Right? So said, I think let's go forward. Let's go forward. No, so the, we, with a very valid point, you know, and uh, I think uh, as we get along on the slide, so just keep patience, guys. Another 10, 15 minutes, you'll got, get to hear about how it's done. I've kept it very, very simple. Uh, there are a lot of people who have experience around automation. Please feel free uh, at, at the end of the session to kind of ask more questions. Let's move along. So we have talked about what RPA is. What I wanted to now cover is something which is What, what does an RPA platform comprise of? You know, I wanted to cover this in detail so that you get an understanding of when we when you talk to people or start using it, what all comes in the platform. And, and you learn how easy it is to do things in, in the RPA world. Right? So let's start off with the simple. We have something called discovery phase. This is the first phase. And an RPA platform a lot of times uh, uses a discovery tool. I, I'll cover what is the IOSA discovery tool, which will help you understand this. Now, what people have gone ahead and done is even automated the fact of finding what to automate. That's a very interesting English statement. So automated how to find what to automate. Okay? That's what discovery tools are doing. Right? And it's just not ours. There's a lot of tools in the market which does this, tools like Celonis, you know, which is doing that. But I also discover also does this. So what, what happens is that the way that the way this stage is run is that uh, I'll cover this in the next slide in detail. But this stage is run is where we sit and try and understand the processes that are being done right now and map it and create a plan how to how will we automate this. I'll cover the stage in the next slide at length. Each of these stages I'll cover. Let me just quickly run you through what the stages are. Then you have something called as the development stage. This is where once you've discovered what you want to automate, you develop it, right? And for that, you use a component called Studio. Most of these uh, tools across the board, they call it Studio itself. I'll cover the features of Studio, how it makes it easy, what Spita talked about, how easy it is to use a Studio. You know, we'll cover that in the next slide. Then you have something called bots, which is running these automations, right? These automations need to be installed in particular desktops or laptops or even on servers so that they can behave and run on their own right and these are i'll tell you i'll cover it about what kind of bots are there and what can be used and what cannot be used right then obviously measure where the analytics aspect of life comes into play these are insights simple insights how is your process doing how is your automation running the log files the audit files as well as predictive analytics in terms of what is the process requirements and how is the process going to succeed in the future. And then last but not the least, what we call as work zone, which is basically to monitor this entire story from discover to studio to bots to analytics. There's a tool that monitors this entire story or orchestrates these stories. A lot of companies call it calls it orchestration. We call it work zone. Uh, you can call it whatever. At the end of it, it's monitoring and controlling it. Now let's talk about each of these phases and how you can kind of become an expert in that particular phase and how you can kind of learn that. So each of these phases is a different skill set and you can actually gain knowledge of each of these skill sets and get trained and become an expert in that area, right? Let's go talk about discover, you know, what, what we do in the discovery stage. A discovery stage is basically where the automation journey begins by identifying business processes, mapping what needs to be automated. Sometimes it's very, very simple, you know, which is like I said, opening an Outlook account. Sometimes it's very, very complex, which is monitoring or managing uh, probably a shop floor or machine or a network of uh, communication cables, but basically sitting and understanding what business processes to automate. Right? And the output of this stage is a process design document, which is, which carries the description, the process flow, as well as the description of what needs to be automated. Now, there is a very interesting concept here, right? So guys, bear with me for two minutes. Right? If you've done automation, you'll understand this. So I'll give a snapshot of our tool, uh, the IOZO Discover tool, you know, talking about this. Now, what's important in this is... Uh, maybe you'll is, have to zoom it or sit a little yeah, because the yeah. diagram is not visible at least. But it's just a screenshot, actually. Okay. So, uh, I'm not going to cover the diagram. I'm just showing what, what comes in this. Right? 
Uh, so if you look on the discover stage, what we're doing on the left side, you see a process flow coming down, right? I've not given the details of the process flow, but that's how a process map is done. Now, what's important is you do a click level process map. And when you say a click level process map is that when we train bots, we have to train bots what to do when things fail. Okay, things fail, very simple thing. Uh, we logged in into a web page and the web page did not load. Very recently, I've done an automation, which was UN automation uh, with uh, the, uh, the PF, PF portal. And when we were building the automation, the PF site was down for one whole day. Now, the, the bot used to just keep logging in and it keep refreshing, keep logging in, keep refreshing. Right? If you don't tell the bot that it needs to keep refreshing, the bot will fail. So what we need to do is at this stage, identify what we call as failure points, either technical failure points or application or process failure points, and document that. So this, there's a tool that helps you do it. And you got to be, we carry snap screenshots of all the screens that need automation, just so that at the development stage, it becomes easy to identify. And there is a document that the documentation that is prepared. For. This is discovered. Now the role in the company that does this, we call them as business analysts. It's not necessary that only a business analyst can become a business analyst. Even you can become a business analyst. It's a very easy course to do to learn a business analyst. And we'll tell you how to do that course and where to do that course from. But you can do that business analysis course. And a lot of companies, I was talking to a global company in New York uh, just a, a month back, a month and a half back. And what they said is that there are 100 people in their company who got self-trained to do business analysis. And each area, they're going and evaluating and doing business analysis and identifying how to do automation and automation in that particular. So this is a response to somebody who asked me, what can be automated? I would rather have you tell me, you know, than me telling you. I can give you some examples, but my advice will be do the business analysis course. It will probably take you a day or two days to do the basics of it. And you can actually come back and say that, okay, this makes sense, this makes sense, and this makes sense, right? That's what my advice will be. So this is the discover phase. Now let's go to the interesting build phase. Right? Now this is where we call the studio comes into play. Now, next Smitha talked about what has changed in the world is we have moved away from that coding days to low code, no code, drag and drop days. Right? Now, developers use drag and drop activities to create automations. So anybody can be a developer. It is no more that you need to sit down and write some lines of code to understand and automate. Very, very simple and easy. Uh, just if I'll show you a screenshot, we have a community version as well. You can please download if you want. You have created programs on the left side of the screen, which you can simply drag on the panel and can do an automation from there. Right? Very, very easy to use. I've had youngsters who have passed out of college create automations by sitting there. There are simple things to learn. And again, we can go through a developer course to do that to learn on how to do, which is concepts like uh, having variables, what are the variables and what you want to pass as data to be included on this. But barring that, I think programming logic requirement, uh, learning is not more than half an hour. You don't need to know more than half an hour of programming logic. And that is not because we will use programming logic. It is just basically to tell you what it means, nothing more. Very, very easy to use drag and drop uh, formations in developing automations. Okay, next one, the run stage. Now this is where we say what kind of bots are run, right? Now bots can be of two kinds. We call them as unattended bots or attended bots. Let me explain what is unattended bots first. Unattended bots are basically bots that you put it on server and they run on their own forever. You don't need to interfere. They don't need any help or assistance. Whenever a task comes, they take the task and start working on it. Task comes is a very critical question. It's very simple. It's as a human would do. A task, an attendant bot can take a task by continuing to monitor an email. So a lot of times, uh, just an email and monitor an inbox, 
and the moment an email comes it becomes activated and starts doing whatever it needs to be done it can also be scheduled you can put it on a time trigger that every morning 9 am get up and do this i'm sure it is not going to make coffee for you but at least if there is anything on the digital data it's going to do it and it can really do that third thing is it can even manage file folders you have created a folder in in the system and the moment somebody keeps a file there the bot gets activated and starts doing the task like in humans a lot of times functions that are being done where we are told that uh, this is where we we'll keep this file and from there you start doing this particular thing right particularly in the reporting side of the world it can do that too and you can also set up work queues basically large companies where we do uh, financial companies where we do automations they prefer to create a work queue any new task that's come for reconciliation financial transaction moves into that work queue and uh, you have multiple bots monitoring that work queue and taking that transaction and moving forward that's the unattended bots of the world now attended bots attended bots are something which are there to assist users and humans right where some human interaction is involved these these are type of bots which are let me give you a very simple example uh, let's say check processing a lot of banks when they do check processing the written part is read by bots but the signature matching is done by humans right this is a very crude example even signature matching can be done using ai i know that and we do that but i'm just giving you a crude example uh, because if just to understand the concept this is where anything needs a human in the loop right some part of it being done by a bot some part of being done by a bot uh, by uh, a human and then probably a bot again this is an attended bot so we ask you to use an attended bot i've given a simple screenshot of i was a bot runner where it shows the trace uh, of various processes that it's running now bots can run as many processes as you want it just and they can run it much much faster there was one automation that we did which used to take close to about 8 to 9 hours to do and bots were able to do it in less than 3 minutes that's the kind of data now the fun is that a lot of time humans spend time wasted on toggling between screens when they're doing data processing bots don't have to do that at one single time they are able to capture all the information and toggle and then enter all the information at one single go so that saves a lot of time this is what bots are about okay uh, measure i have not included a lot of uh, slides here but basically this is analytics and bots and processes you can do any kind of analytics you can do drag and drop analytics you can set up your own reports whatever number of reports you want i don't think that needs an explanation but basically you can run whatever analytics you can also plug into third party analytics tools like kibana and take your bot information and push it there and do any kind of predictive analytics to build process map process insights for you that's the rpa stage of measure and insights which is very common for any tool last but not the least the work zone this is something which this for orchestrating this sits on top manages your entire workflow basically this is where the administrative aspect comes into play you know this is where people who are actually uh, monitoring the entire story use this application they'll sit down the login this is a this is a cloud based application this is a web web app this is a phone app as well and you can actually real time check uh, what is happening with your bots what are they doing and uh, whether they are busy or they are free this is very simple to managing humans we have we have in left bots also if <laughs> they need to be monitored uh, based on multi tenanted architectures most of these tools i'm not talking just one tool everybody is similar everybody will have an orchestration tool which will monitor your bots it is very important to use an orchestration tool because a lot of times you may have a bot which is just busy one hour a day so you should be able to assign it to some other task or do something else this is very simple to uh, similar to managing humans these, these are like your digital workers and they need to be monitored and managed and need to be evaluated of what success and output that's coming out okay? so that's what a orchestration layer or work zone actually does in a particular rpa tool structure so these are the components of uh, of an rpa tool now what i wanted to correlate it with is what is an rps platform center of excellence in an organization and how does it play the role of uh, uh, 
uh, various things. So in the discovery stage, I talked about business analysts are the ones who are most focused on the discovery stage, right? And like I said, anybody in your organization can be a business analyst, right? In the build stage, you have developers and architects. Now, anybody can be a developer. Right? I would say an architect is somebody, an expert. I have the best architects are guys who are not engineers. So many process experts are architects that you'll be surprised. And because it's very similar that the tool is so easy to use that you become an expert just by using the tool, right? The concept of citizen de developers, right? So there are organizations in the US who have moved into a stage that they have bought licenses for the entire company and told everybody, you can build whatever you want. So there are people who have built 50 bots just to make their life easy. So there was a guy I was seeing, he has built a bot because a lot of time he wasted sending calendar invites. Right? So he has built a bot for sending calendar invites. Right? I've seen so many people do these automations in an organization. Now, that's where the future is. Trust me, even Indian organizations are going to go in that direction of giving. It's very simple. I know a lot of you are not able to relate to it. But do you realize that automation is in everything that you do even today? Your company has given you Excel. You have given you Microsoft Office licenses, Microsoft Word licenses. 20 years back, that was not a norm. Today, you have uh, email on your phone. Trust me, 20 years back, that was a not a norm. Even having a phone was not a norm. Forget about having this Android phone with everything with email and all capability, right? And when BlackBerry came out and I had my first BlackBerry, uh, it was a status symbol, right? We used to hang it on the side of the pocket and everybody used to be like, oh, we used to walk like overconfident just because we had a BlackBerry sitting on the side of our pocket. Similar right? <laughs> Smith relates to it. Uh, I don't know how many folks are relating to that fact. But that was not a norm. But now it's a norm. When you come into an office, you expect to have Microsoft Office. You expect to have an email account. Companies did not give email accounts to people. Similarly, trust me, in the next two to three years, every employee will have a developer license or studio license, and they will be required to build automations. Because if you're spending 30 to 40% of your time doing this, uh, what we call as useless activities or completely non-productive activities, companies will realize how much they are going to save and how much more they are going to do just by people implementing these automations. So who can become a developer? Anybody and everybody can develop become a developer and you will end up becoming a developer and i'll talk about that support and maintenance support and maintenance are again very similar roles we call that hyper care hyper care is very very simple uh, using work zone to continuously monitor and maintain bots and if something is failing highlight it and connect it hot lastly is project management every organization needs project managers our roles that needs to be filled and uh, you need to do activities there Okay, moving from there, what now? So, ab kya karna hai? So, seekhna padega. We will have to learn. That's what the real story is from here. Now, how to learn? Right? That's that's the question. That's why what we have done is we've created something called as an IOZO Academy. This is a tagline which a very senior leader said very recently, you know, and I and I relate to it a lot. A lot of people in this room or this webinar would be thinking, yeah, I am a finance guy. What do I have to do? Somebody will be saying an operations. I'm an operations guy. What automation? I'm still needed in the company. But the fact is that very soon there will be no finance folks, no operation folks, no sole sales folks. But every will be a techno finance person, techno operations guy, or a techno sales guy. You have to learn technology irrespective of anything in this world. So that is something which is becoming very, very relevant and very important for everything. So what we have done is we have created IOZO Academy, you know, and we have partnered with NASCOM Future Skills Prime and Ministry of Electronics, where you see, I mean, obviously you know because you're seeing this webinar, but that's what we have done. And uh, we have put these courses for business analysts, developers, solution architects online. We have created a community version of iVozo as a tool. 
and you know what's very interesting it's always free we don't charge you for these courses we don't charge you for using the community but we rather encourage you to do so we're asking people to kind of just go join and do these courses these are courses which are built by experts the tool which is built by experts and you can go ahead and learn on your own and start using it right you can just log in and start using it and and, and try and be an expert in this, in this entire area okay now i'll take a 5 minutes thing and let's get into questions for another 10 15 minutes and then we'll cover the last couple of slides from that so there is one question uh, which is there in q and a that i'm a copcom professional interested in moving into marcom for automation and robotics could you please share more details on scope of this role the importance and the future direction space i mean so <laughs> <laughs> a very very specific question uh, but i'll not uh, um, I, i'll not do is kind of dwell into what all you can do but so maybe you know, i'll take that sid i'll take uh, it i'll make know. it generic <laughs> so that everybody can <laughs> yeah sure. so 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 that's the reason why future skill prime is there because tomorrow's job roles we are not able to predict right the, the role that you're saying uh, uh, daniel it's not there today we don't see a robotics automation marcom site but maybe you may be the first one who has experience in corpcom you understand rpa and when you come in that is a role that is getting created and that's the beauty of the future right so some of these things it is just that today like how let's say sid was a finance professional and he understands that he goes back and becomes a, a cfo he will find new new things to do right so it 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 is up to you to see your current domain knowledge and this particular technology how it comes together is for you to create looking forward to a new marcom uh, revolution with rpa daniel very very well put sir i think that's and that's what i keep telling people that uh, it's a new technology you have an option to build whatever you can build out of it right uh okay it's not that new anymore but it's still becoming popular and it's still there are a lot of areas where applications can be created and known you know and you can you can probably add value to it so marcom is an interesting field uh, would be one to put there we Any also yeah we have i think we had a lot of people raising hands earlier and uh, since the questions are so long i'm just wondering should we open it up for some time ask people question we can do that i'm okay yeah and in the meanwhile we have two more questions in q and a which tools application access is required to do rpa in any functional area nothing i mean uh, you in rpa you give access to the bot very similar to you giving access to any human that joins your company so it's for example if if you say that uh, uh, bot has to work on outlook then uh, you have to just create an outlook account for the bot that's it okay. so there is no nothing uh, other than that so there is also one question how can so people are asking very uh, you know industry specific like how sales how automation how uh, manufacturing so i think we, you address this question and uh, maybe yeah. uh, if you can just generally say you know how it can be an industry specific and, and, in any industry it can be used right the lot of i mean sales industry there's so much happening right uh, managing your uh, networks you know the, the lot of companies are using managing sales channels you know creating new products managing incentive structures uh, this there's like no limit i think probably uh, what you simply do is even if you google rpa for sales industry you will get so many so many so many use cases at the end of it right the there's no limit right i mean we we saw uh, managing renew customer renewals for product companies being done invoice generation being done through rpa you know po creation being done through rpa so sales industry other than the fact that you're talking to the customer there are a lot of other touch points with the customer which is which creates the holistic experience for a customer right uh, for example how often how soon do you respond to his emails right how soon do you resolve queries How, how do you do customer service? That becomes a question. How how do you create pro, pro, proposal decks? I have I have had a company that was creating uh, customer profiling 
before their sales guys went for a meeting. So even that's uh, that's being done through this, right? So 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 many so many uh, applications. Just if you just Google it, or you want to go through the business analyst course and understand, why not? So, Sid, there was one question which I missed, and I think it would be very important uh, since there are so many competitors of you in the market. How you as an Indi you know, uh, a visa differentiate vis-a-vis -vis other providers in this area? Okay, uh, lot, lot, lot of factors on this, right? I mean, I don't want to get into a sales pitch. I'll avoid doing it, but just for a fact, uh, the way it works is that we, so one is we recommend go to uh, G2 softwares for checking out reviews on tools, you know, and you'll find us that our reviews uh, will give you a lot of explanation of how customers find us differentiated, right? But let's give some very basic, basic, basic examples, right? One is uh, the kind of offerings we do. So we offer AI and ML activities which are built in with, with, with our tools, right? Which is, we are moving much faster towards intelligent automation as compared to us. Second is uh, the ease of use of our tool. A lot of customers have given feedback, even in G2, we are ranked the highest in ease of use uh, of our tool, right? Uh, now G2 is actual user feedback. So this is not manipulated data, which is published by uh, some of the other <laughs> analyst companies. I will not recommend that. But my point is these are users which have given that feedback. Third is uh, our licensing structure is very, very different from other tools, right? One is one of the key factors is that we only charge for concurrent licenses. So that creates like an on-demand workforce, right? A lot of other companies are charging on user-based, you know, so even if a bot is not being used on its line idle, you have to end up paying for it. Just because we offer concurrent licenses, our customers love us for this, right? They're saying that at least I'm not paying for something that I'm not using. So that's one of the other than that, right, there are 20, 30 features which are very technical in nature. I don't want to dwell here on this. But the fact of life is that uh, we are all working towards what we call is uh, semantic automation. The intent is to make it as easy for you to use automation as possible. And we are all, at the end of the day, even uh, uh, we're driving towards it. What I would say that we are closer to it as compared to most most of the others and we have the top three or top five of us which are closer towards semantic automation and that's where we are headed in the future that's in a nutshell the answer thank Otherwise, you thank you thank you sir thank so you. uh i have uh can bots be hacked so i think i'm sure the answer is yes no no actually no they no. no so the thing is that the bots are running on your systems what can be hacked is your system a bot cannot be hacked. So please understand that difference, right? Uh, it is not something which is interacting with anything other than your applicants' application. Your backend applications can be hacked, but bots cannot be hacked. What will get hacked is your laptop or your server, right? But not the bot. Right? That's what the reality is. So a breach will be in your in your system or your infrastructure system. Okay. Very important to understand that difference, right? Because it's using the front end to interact, right? It's not going through or connecting secretly in the back end. So can we use a single bot for multiple workflow tasks? Using oh, bots yeah. is very expensive. So how can we check the 100% utilization of bots? Yeah, that's exactly what I talked about, right? Uh, okay. One is uh, we offer concurrent licenses. So you pay for the bot that you're using. Second is a bot, if it takes one hour, you can assign another process to it. It will do something else. So the, again, okay, that's in our tool, that's the biggest differentiator, right? Because bots and processes are not coupled. A bot is, so imagine this, that processes are in a room and bots are in another room. Whenever you need to run a process, you just call that bot from that room. It comes in, does that process and goes back and sits idle in that room. You have to just call it and keep doing as many tasks. So you can do hundred tasks in a day. And there's so many companies. So there's one company in the Middle East uh, who automated about 160 different reports. They just took about, I think, what, three or four licenses for that? And they could automate 160 different reports. So uh, I see a lot of so questions. Is, yeah, yeah, one thing, Anjana. 
Uh, yeah. So I see uh, Shraddha commenting that let's go through the syllabus first and then take chat later. <laughs> She's worried that we yeah. lose our trendings, which is a valid point. So maybe you should yeah. do that. And yeah. one question which maybe at the end you can answer is this. If I, there's someone who's asked, uh, if I learn automation anywhere, UI part is named all the tools and say, will learning one help in learning the other? So there is a philosophy yeah. and the tool part of it. So maybe you can cover that. Yeah, no, absolutely it will help. Yeah. See, the concept is learn any tool, right? I mean, learn any tool. It will teach you the basic concepts of how that tool operates. Now, it will also teach you uh, how to apply it, right? So, okay, one important thing is where do you learn, right? So, there are a lot of companies that are just teaching just the, uh, what, what I call is, uh, what their tool does. What is important is that do a course which also teaches you the applications of that tool and the relevance of what you're using in that tool. If, if, if you do that as a course, it makes it very easy uh, for you to kind of uh, go ahead and learn any other tool. Right? Otherwise, if you just try and learn key, what a button does in a tool, then that's not going to help you learn in the other tools. right? And, and that's why I think NASCOM and us, we had been interacting a lot in our courses when NASCOM helped us improve our courses by telling us uh, how to make sure that it covers national occupational standards and how does it ensure that you actually learn the application of a tool, right? So if you're doing a course from a place which also teaches you the applications and meanings of particular things, that makes more more sense than right? Rather than just learning the aspects of the tool. Make sense? So, Sid, before we go any further, maybe we will open it up for questions in the end. I just want to walk people through where are the courses located on our platform and so that, you know, people don't miss on that part. So, for everybody's information, uh, you know, I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, this is uh, These courses are available on our platform and I'm showing you all so that uh, you don't, uh, you know, lose it. And uh, some of you may forget the, uh, take the direct link. So it is very simple. Go to the Future Skills Prime platform, sign up or sign in. If you have not never signed up, then sign up first and then sign in. If you have signed in before, you can one search with RPA. That's number one way the second thing is when you go to rpa as a technology in learning right you scroll down and you will be able to see the solution architect under architecture and the job under the uh you know there is under the job category strategy there is an analyst we also have other courses available in rpa within the technology. We also have a very basic things available. Supposedly, you don't have any knowledge about RP and maybe you want to first learn very basics before you get into the course. So do that and then go to any course. So all of that is available on our platform and like it said, they have their courses here. I'm putting the link. I've put it multiple times. I'm going to also put the link, uh, it will take you to the homepage if you've never signed in. Otherwise, you'll have to sign in and you'll be able to directly land into the course. So over to you, Sid. And I think uh, because we have a lot of questions and uh, maybe we can, uh, I don't know if you're comfortable, we can open it up to people because rather than typing, it'll be best they can ask their questions and you, you know, we can keep it open. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we, have, we have just 15 minutes left. I think let's open it up. Uh, we have covered most of the cu curriculum. I think that's the, the, that was more relevant for the public here. Let's open it up. Let's see what questions come in and we can take it from there. Sure. So if people who are typing and your questions are not addressed and they are very long, it would be best you, you know, you can put up your hand and I can unmute you and you can ask your question and we can take it in an interactive way. So I am, uh, Surinder, I am allowing you to yeah, please. So you are on unmute. Are you not? Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we are able yeah, to hear yeah. Good morning, all. Actually, I would like to know actually the basic information. Actually, I, I'm very interested actually in the robotic automation process. I think actually with my uh, actually good uh, mechanical background. Actually, for this one, I think actually, is there any uh, basic actually programming actually knowledge is required actually to, to start this program? 
So uh, reality is that there is no uh, requirement of programming language, the knowledge to actually do automations, right? But there is requirement to understand how logic works, you know, and we call that programming logic, right? But the logic basically, uh, what it basically means is that uh, any software program has a set of rules that needs to be followed, right? So that is what we call as programming logic. Programming logic is half an hour or one hour of learning, not more than that. You don't need to know coding, you don't need to do anything else. Right? And uh, a lot of these developer courses will teach you the programming logic, right? And uh, how to set things up. These are very simple things, you know, I mean, when we when I'm using the word programming logic, it make, it's making it sound complicated, it's very simple. Basically that, what are text boxes, what are variables, these are very, very simple things, you know, you can go and do a half an hour, one hour, uh, we have a small short course that you can go and learn, and, and once you've done that. When you start using the tool, everything is drag and drop, and purely logic based, and you can learn uh, as you go along, you don't need to have any uh, any programming logic uh, to kind of run RPA as a tool as such. Sure, thank you. And Aviral, you can speak now. I've unmuted you. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Uh, so Siddha, just want to understand, let's say if somebody from a finance background, right, do, wants to do an RPA uh, in SAP, right? So we take a, a lot of reports wherein, I mean, if, if we can do some automation in terms of manually taking those reports, What's, what sort of approach is required to do that? I mean, with this, uh, I mean, maybe as you said, um, just uh, Evazo, right? I mean, this particular software can help us to do automation and interact with SAP also? Yes, yes, yes. You have pre-built SAP activities already set in Evazo, right? We have lot of our automation is done on SAP, by the way, by finance guys. And uh, you can connect with us offline and we'll tell you how to go about it and as well as help you in any way we can. Uh, SAP is, I think, one of the most commonly automated things as of, as of date, not particularly around the finance process. Okay. So from invoice processing to posting to reconciliations to reporting, everything can be automated. With SAP. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Sumit, I'm unable to unmute you. I've tried doing it. Uh, I think, yeah, so you'll uh, you want to, uh, can you put your question? Otherwise, because uh, we'll take Nagaraju in the meanwhile. I'm not able to unmute you, Sumit. Hi, thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone. Uh, so my question is, is there any possibility to uh, set up a demo where uh, we can have a, a little more understanding about how the process is done? Like, I know you said uh, um, uh, drag and drop options are available. So I just want to understand if there is any demo that can be set up. Yes, so, of course. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I have actually shared a form, uh, you know, Nagraj, uh, you can maybe fill in and I will share that details with Sid also. Sure. And uh, then maybe they'll call you and you can you know, Definitely. get in touch. Thank you. Them. Thanks. And but let's say if there is a lot of interest, we can do a demo session, right? Now this is the yeah. theory. If yeah. There is interest. So you, you tell us in the feedback form. We need, we need. Yeah, that is so, also... Because it's also a feedback that I'm asking in the same form. So give us feedback also. Yeah. Right. So I think uh, uh, Nagraji, so you, uh, I don't know. That's all. I think Sumit, uh, if your hand is not raised now. So we do have a lot of other people who have messaged in the chat still with some questions. Uh, and there are people who would like to understand how can they cross, you know, uh, adopt this particular area of RPA with some years of experience in IT or, you know, some other domain for a while of, and that would like 10 to 12 years of experience if they can move a career path up here. There are a lot of uh, people who are working on RPA have switched careers. So matter of fact is that what we have seen uh, most of the world which was doing activities around, let's say, give, I'll give you some examples, right? Uh, process excellence people 
have moved towards doing business analyst kind of jobs then we have uh, uh, testing people we have uh, programmers from dotnet who have moved into rpa a lot of folks who are doing rpa today are people who have switched career while new uh, new uh, workforce is also adopting rpa but uh, people who are who have 10 12 year of ex experience have moved into project management or or doing more things like that right and what i would actually tell you is that uh, it's not an option you will have to because even in it there is so much automation happening right it infrastructure management there is so much automation happening that you will end up implementing in that area as well right so particularly server management uh, things like even in programming and coding rpa is being used for testing purposes for uh, ensuring quality of code ensuring people are submitting timelines so uh, rather than you thinking that whether you should do it or not you my advice is that you should learn rpa so that you can actually start adopting it in your organization and start increasing increasing productivity and then figure out whether uh, you've learned enough and you are interested enough to switch careers into it that's what my recommendation I have Vishal. Vishal, would you like to ask your question? I have, uh, I think. Yes, yeah. yes ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I want to know what is the difference between business analyst and business analytics as non-programming background I have. Yeah, okay. Uh, so business analytics is more about the measure of insights, right? So analytics is when we do, uh, when we look at data and try and understand the health of uh, a particular process or give out some predictions about the, health, the process. So it's more around data analytics, analyzing data and predicting and uh, or predict, or either predicting or coming out with any kind of uh, uh, idea or outlook how things are doing or about the health of the process. While business analyst is somebody who is more of a person who evaluates the operating model of a business, right? So he is, he is looking at how a business is operating in terms of the actions and manages the flow and identifies tasks that are productive, tasks that are not productive. Right? So that's the difference. Uh, analytics is more related with data and deriving and predicting. Analyst is more about understanding how the structure of the process is and then whether it's integral and whether it's doing productive activities or not. That's the key difference between. And we have a question in the Q&A and I think a lot of the other people will also be interested in hearing the answer. Can people who don't want to be in a job and do freelancing, is RP a good option for them? And what is, you know, what can they do there? Yeah, absolutely. So see, uh, we, what is happening that if you, I mean, you have various websites like freelancer and all where you get work, uh, work as a freelancer, right? And RPA forms is like any other software development or any other freelance activity. Now, interesting thing is that why is RPA becoming popular uh, is because of the speed in which automation is done, right? Uh, if you did a traditional project, it will be six months, nine months, 12 months, right? While RPA can be implemented in as less as two to three weeks. Uh, there are some report automation which we can do in two to three days. Now, in these kind of things, because speed is an integral factor in this, uh, freelancers is going to become more and more popular because not always you want to hire somebody for a one month project, right? But if, if I'm a company, if I'm just doing five or 10 projects, you know, I'm not going to hire somebody for just two or three months, right? So it's easier for me to freelance it out and ask somebody to kind of just go ahead and deliver the project for me and, and we move ahead. So I, I believe that more and more freelancers in this area will become popular. You, know? and you have these websites where you can pick up these tasks very easily. Yeah, and, and usually uh, freelancing uh, will work well at the beginning. Let's say a company is trying to do something, they want some POC to be done. So low yeah. level job, very uh, limited skill you can try. But if you really want to make that as a career, you have to become an architect because general job even like how Sid was saying citizen developers their own team they would want them to pick up bots and I mean doing these things so you have to be at a place where you can actually uh, do much more or audit and review or things like that will be the freelancing requirements again hypothetically considering okay. what has happened no, you're absolutely right yeah. so basically 
a lot of time people think that uh, freelancing is easy while i would say that freelancing is more difficult because you need to be an expert in your area to be able to deliver right i mean a lot of time uh, people think that i if you if you become an expert your value goes very very high right and you can actually make a lot more in, than in a job but be that expert so like so that is talking about you have to become an architect you know learn at an extensive pace to be able to implement the whole concept so banu you can ask your question this is the last question i think yeah. because we also have to thank said because we won't find time for that otherwise <laughs> yeah yeah sure sure uh, hi said <laughs> Yeah, my name is uh, Banu Prakash. I am basically a mechanical engineer. So oh, I can't hear him. His mic was muted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You can. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ma- yeah. Okay. Ma- Okay, fine, uh, fine, fine. Vanu, you can you can speak it. Later on, I will ask. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, uh, I am basically a mechanical engineering background. Works on uh, softwares like mechanical softwares, uh, design softwares, and uh, analysis <laughs> softwares. So uh, I would j- I just would like to know in 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 your experience, uh, have you ever got chance to work on uh, mechanical designs and analysis softwares automation? Uh, not something that hits my mind as of now, right? Uh, but I can research this, or somebody from my team can research this and try and get back to something. But like again, yet again, I I will say that uh, you should look at your area and say whether it's logical or not. You know, and if you show us, we'll be able to tell you what your thinking is right or wrong. Right? A lot of see, there are so many fields, so many industries, so many. Each one of them are slowly adopting, right? So as we get to hear about it, we we talk about it. But it's very difficult to tell you that every area what can be automated, what what cannot be automated. I would rather say that you look at it because even starting with SAP automation, somebody got that idea that I should do this, right? and then it started from there, and now it's a very common thing. So maybe I would advise that you look at it, and if you need help from us, we'll be glad to help. Uh, reach out to us, and we'll help you kind of uh, do whatever is required. So yeah, we are there on the time, and I don't want to, you know, take much of Sid's time, and uh, I want Just, to thank uh, him. <laughs> Angela, Rajesh had one question, so he was waiting for us. Oh my time. God! So that's very nice that you remember and you want to answer it. I thought you will be running out of time, and so that's fine, Rajesh. Rajesh. So Rajesh, uh, I am asking him to unmute actually, so it's not getting unmuted. Rajesh, Rajesh, can you unmute and ask? You are already, I think, allowed to talk. Can I ask my question? Rahul, okay, Rahul, yeah, Rahul, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Actually, uh, I am into SAP, SAP materials management and warehouse management. So, uh, are there any uh, RPAs already implemented for a few clients, or do you have a list of RPAs which can be implemented? Because we can definitely suggest client that okay, this is already implemented in the OEMs like Tata Motors or big OEMs. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. can be already implemented in other clients. So instead of inventing, if it is already available, so we can definitely suggest something and uh, implement if it is already there uh, in some other company. Yes, yes, Rahul. On SAP, uh, we would have more than one hundred and fifty customers, if I'm not wrong, and. Uh, I don't know how many use cases. So there's lots and lots of SAP use cases. Uh, you can reach out to us, and our team will share it with you. So not one or two. And there are more than 150 customers where SAP automation has been done. Okay, thanks a lot. If I get a list of that, uh, those uh, RPAs, so yes, yes. definitely yes, sort yes. it out based on my module, and uh, we'll suggest to the client. Yes, yes. Please, please. This can be this. used. Yes, yes. Please feel free to reach out. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. I think we are done. Out of time. Yeah, we are done and we exceeded our time of 12.30. And uh, so thank you everybody for joining us. And I would like to thank Sid and uh, Yash for doing all the arrangements. And Smita, would you like to say something? <laughs> thank, thank you so much. I think... Uh, the, the kind of audience that we are seeing. So uh, just to give you a background, we are working with uh, tech companies as well as non-tech companies. And we also have IT and non-IT uh, participants, right? So that's why you get a variety of these questions. 
uh, this is an area where uh, I think the future is, and uh, I hope this has given you some interest to go into the next level and start learning something, and we'll keep this conversation going. Thank you so much, Sid and Yes, this was a very uh, different session. We have only done proper <laughs> digital text session so far. <laughs> so very thank thankful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sweetheart. Thank you, Anjana. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.